Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belonging to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavakakwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. And double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that taught us this truth and that continue to teach this truth well and to the hopeful elect across the globe and the few, the very few brothers, okay, and sisters listening and also learning across the globe, okay. This lesson, when I do lessons, it's not with the intent of taking shots at anybody but the scriptures what does it talk about the oil having the oil and holding to onto that oil and keeping what them lights burning because once you have a lamp how does that lamp stay up stay on it's going to tell you so we're going to go to the parables and lord willing this will be edifying to the hopeful election i want to say salakia if my voice sounds a bit croaky it's just the hay fever but let's go to Matthew 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven, and this is a parable of the ten virgins. Then shall the, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, okay, which took their lamps. Okay, so they took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And the bridegroom is who? Yahweh Shai. And the bridegroom, what is a husband? Okay. And what woman unto Yahweh Shai? What married unto Yahweh Shai? Okay, and five of them were wise, and five of and five were foolish. So in this truth, you're gonna have those that are wise, because they apply the scriptures to the best of their ability. They were actually living it. They were living the scriptures. It wasn't a thing of entertainment or just showing up. They weren't. They were not lukewarm. They gave it their all. Doubt these were the wise virgins, and five were foolish. The five were foolish, the, the ones that never thought much of the truth. This was just something to do. They were just going through the motions. Excuse me. And they that were, and they that were foolish took their lamps. Okay. Excuse me. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So they never had the oil. Okay. They never had the oil. They never had the understanding. Okay. And that's what you see in this truth. Oil's leaking out. That can happen. And they that were foolish took <laughs> and they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So the, the wise they had the knowledge, they had the understanding, which is what going to get them through that time. And it's the belief in what they've read. Because it's not just the understanding itself. Because Isaiah was it 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. Of thy time and the fear of the Lord is his treasure, but that's to those that have what put their trust in what they've read because you've got some that just just go through the motions, just sneak on your page. And yeah, we're here to learn, but there's a difference between being on mockingbirds and not really having any, any understanding, okay, and actually going through these things and gaining understanding, okay. One verse four, but the wise took, took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Okay, these were the wise virgins. Okay, they had the oil. Okay, and it was burning bright in their vessels with their lamps. Why the bridegroom tarried? Okay, tarried means what? Delayed. Okay, and that's why the scripture says, Put not off the Lord from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come. It tells you that in the Apocrypha. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So, what's that indicative of? Being lukewarm, going back into the world, not really care, not being serious about this truth. Verse six, and at midnight, midnight, there was a cry, a cry made, and who was who? Who made that cry? Okay, because don't the scriptures say, um, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, cry out loud. So that cry was made by who? The prophets. There was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, <laughs> Yahweh Shai, okay, 
excuse me as well, my voice is so messed up. Bear me just a minute. The bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. There's going to be a time when Yahweh is coming. That's why he told us to watch. Okay. Go ye out to meet him. Verse 7. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamp. So when you trim a lamp, why do you have to trim the lamp? And you're trimming there's something called trimming the wick. You trim the wick so that light can burn what? more. Okay. Because if you don't trim it, that light is going to fade out. It's not going to burn as much. So the wise, what they trim their lamps. And in this truth, that's also going to, when you're trimming what, you're also cutting things off to the best of your ability, cutting things off. Okay, because what there's a trimming process also in this truth. Where we're working on ourselves. If you haven't been working on yourself, then you ain't been really trimming your lamp. And the foolish are unto the wise. And this, this is what you're seeing in the truth. And the foolish said unto the wise, give, give us of your oil. So what you're going to be seeing today, individuals sneaking on your page. We know individuals do that. Sneaking on your page, trying to take your oil. But guess what? You cannot take what another man's been blessed with. And there's a difference. Like I said, there's a difference between, obviously, because I, still, I get knowledge from the elder apostles. I get knowledge from other brothers. But there's a difference between you already having the knowledge and you just sneaking on a brother's page. Because you don't have it. There's a difference. Okay. Give us give us of your oil. For our lamps are gone out. So it says. <laughs> their lamps were already gone out. They never had it. And the oil is. The spirit. And there's also an anointing oil. That's why. What did you have? What should I say in. Now John said in. Someone John. What's it John. First or second. Chapter it talks about. You have an unction. To know all things and the unction is an anointing with what the holy spirit and that's an, an what an anointing with what the spirit but that an anointing also goes into oil <laughs> okay for our lamps are gone out so certain man's lamps it's already been gone out the spirit is not there they don't have they don't have it but the wise aren't, and that's why certain men they would go five days and it would get to a week then it would get to two weeks and you don't see them they fade out so that lamp, you need to always what, kindle that fire. Trim that lamp. And why they went to buy, maybe it's verse 9, but the wise answered and say, not so. In other words, no. Lest there be not enough for us. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't give you what I have because lest it be not enough for us. You've got to get your own. You've got to study for yourself. You've got to give diligence. See, one thing is, I can't speak for all, but in this truth, you have to go through stuff. A lot of men, they want the knowledge. You might sound eloquent or whatever, but are you willing to go through the particular things to gain knowledge, to gain understanding? Certain men, they come into this with a, what's it, a surface level of understanding, and they don't, they don't want to go through the things. They just one foot in and one foot out. They don't want to go for the necessary procedures. Okay? But the men that had the oil... Okay, and hold and held fast to the oil and the lamps are burning. They were in that right passage. They were being built up. So those that didn't have the oil, they were not really being built up. This was just something to do for them. Okay. And while they came and went to buy, let's bear me just a minute. But the wise answer is saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us. And you. Okay. But go ye rather to them that sell. And buy for yourself. So this is the time right now. It'd be wise to start buying right now. Studying. Focusing. Retaining. It's, it's another thing to read. But are you retaining? Some people read these scriptures but they don't retain what's being said. That's why I've done lessons on um repetitiveness. And you've had certain men that have mocked these lessons about, oh, you know, repetitiveness. And Well, when you're repetitive... You're going over something again and again and again and again and again. Because sometimes, even I've been on the highways and Bibles and particular scriptures, I remember them, but I don't remember where the actual um, chapter is. So that's why you need to go over these things again and again and again and again. Okay? Never think you're too good to go over the scriptures again and again. Because with your experience, especially a man that has an experience, what's he going to do? The scriptures are going to be being brought out in a different way. Okay. 
not the same way throughout two or three years. It's going to be brought out different through what? Through your experiences in the truth. A lot of men could just, they could pick up a Bible, sound good. Sound good and equate some worldly um stuff with what they've been through in the world with the truth. You can't do that. That's worldly knowledge. When you come to the truth, it's not about, oh, you know, childhood memories. No, no, no. It's about what you went through in the truth. What have you gained through the truth? Tell me what you've gained through the truth. Spiritually, not, not, not in a carnal sense. Because you have men that have wisdom, but it's worldly wisdom. And you have a man that has the Holy Spirit. So a man that has that worldly wisdom, he's going to be envying a man that has the Spirit. See, there's a difference. One verse ten, and while they went to buy, okay, the bridegroom came, <laughs> and they were, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. So this is why they went to buy. So by then it was too late, and the bridegroom came, and they were, they were that were ready went in with him to the marriage. Okay, the hopeful elect that had what the oil, and the door was shut. And that's why when you read, what's it, Matthew 7 and 24, it talks about those that said, didn't we do the will of the Lord? And the Lord will say, <laughs> depart from me, I never knew you. Is this the same, it's, it's likened unto that same parable. Okay. And the door was shut. Okay. And you can acquaint that with, to the door of them chariots. Okay. And afterward came also other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, Yehoshai, Yehoshai, open to us, let us in. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, excuse me, verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Okay? I know you not. I don't know you. Out of all the things you should be scared of, you should be, you should fear, that's what you should fear. Forget about fear and Esau, that should be your fear, out of everything. You were doing all, you would, ma'am, that's what you don't want. I know you not. You don't want your house to say that. I don't want your house to say that to me. In other words, he doesn't recognize you. Okay. Watch ye therefore, for you know neither the day nor hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. That's why we got to watch. That's why we got to be on our what? On our post. Day in, day out. And I still, I'm, st I'm still saying, all right, Saturdays. You got men that turn up. They just know how to turn up. But for the rest of the week, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you giving your time for your house shy? Are you making time? You're not going to be able to uh, lean on another man. Oh, let me just sneak on his page. Get a few ideas. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with getting ideas of other brothers. But if you're fully dependent and you've made that a habit, I'm going to sneak on his page. I'm going to do it. See, that's, that's that covetous spirit. That's that covetous spirit. You've got to get your own oil. Because if you don't have it, it's going to be seen and it's being seen in these, in these last days. Who has it and who doesn't really have it? Because you've got people that, that would do that. Let me just sneak on his page. Act like I came up with it myself. No, you just sneaked on another brother's page. Nothing's wrong with getting ideas because obviously... You watch other brothers' videos and you're inspired. And you can, through that, you have an idea of a lesson. But if you're always doing that, because that's the whole thing with clout chasing. You've got men that clout chase. They can only do a video if there's some type of contention or some, hype, some, some topic that's really out there. That's the only time they can get on fire for the truth. What does that say? That mean, That's a sign of a guy that he doesn't have the oil. He doesn't have it. If a man's going through a certain trial, that's the only time he can do a video on somebody else. The scripture says, preach not for strife or contention. Okay? So let's go to Luke 12 and 35. Bear me just a minute. Luke 12 and 35. Let your loins be girded about... Okay, the lines of what your mind, okay, and your lights, excuse me, 
<coughs> Excuse me. And your light's burning. So how are lights burning? By your studying, getting into these scriptures. And I'm speaking for myself. I need to study more as well. I need to make more time for studying. Every day I read the Bible, but in terms of studying, making more time to really get into words and particular other things, I need to make more time for that. And let your lights be, and that's how your light stays burning. You're in the world, you're in the world, you're not thinking about the scriptures, then your light ain't burning. It's what, it goes out. It starts to darken. Okay? And you can also equate that with what? <clears throat> men. Okay? And they're what? Their visage. Their image. Their face. You've got men doing videos with a, a dark, 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 dark countenance. Why? Because that what? That oil is what? Being poured out. It's leaving. And you yourselves. Bear me just a minute. And you yourselves like unto men that wait for their lords. Yahweh Shai. And when he will return from the wedding. Okay? Which is what? A marriage. That when he cometh and knocketh, they may be open unto him immediately to those that are what? That are of the hopeful elect, that are done what they were supposed to be doing, that were watching. Verse 37 Blessed are those servants whom the Lord Jehovah shall, when he cometh, shall find so watching. Watching for what? The signs, the return of Jehovah Shai. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself. Okay, Jehovah Shai. Okay, and make them to sit down to meet. Okay, you have to go, and that's another thing. You do know we're going to be sitting down with you, so like your Lord willing, Baba Kasha. We're going to be sitting down eating with Yahweh Shai, and we'll come forth and serve them. Okay, oh, man, that's beautiful, and that's what you have got. You have actually going to be serving us, and he shall come in a second watch, and if he shall come in a second watch, or come in a third watch, and find them so blessed are those servants. Okay, so these are all the different parables. This was Luke 20, 12 and 35, Baba Kasha. Got to keep them lights burning. Okay, stay inspired. Stay spiritually inspired. It's, and it's easy. A lot of the times, you don't even, to get an idea, you don't even need to go on a brother's channel. The things around you. What about the things you went through throughout the day? What you can't do a lesson on the videos, you, the things you've seen throughout the day. Even if you're at work, you can do a video upon that. Things you saw throughout work. There's always something to, to do a, a scripture upon. Always. Okay? Always something. Let's go to Galatians 6. And let's go straight to 4. But let every man, every single man in this truth, prove his own work. So, we come to this truth. I have to prove my own work. You have to prove your own work. Proof means to put to the test. Because this is your own work. I'm not doing your work for you. You're doing it for yourself. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself. Why did it say rejoicing in himself? Because you, it, it, was your, it was your journey. It was your personal journey. You had to go for your own personal trials. Alone. It says, hold on a minute. It says, what now? With him. Alone. And not in another. Because certain, I see it, certain men do that, they rely on other men to be in the spirit. See me, I've, I've, I've never had, um, I've never always had, what's that? There's a word for it. I've, no, I've never always had that, um, that shoulder to lean on. So I know what it's like to really dig in when nobody else is there. When nobody else is giving you a good work, when nobody else is saying, good video. When nobody else is watching. I know what it's like to dig in. Because I've never always had the, um, the company of other brothers, the luxury of having other brothers around me. So I know what it's like to fight, to be in the spirit when you're by yourself. Certain men, they're worried. If they're not around certain other men within one week or two weeks, they don't know what to do. That's, that's, that's a worrying spirit as well. Because what happens when brothers ain't around you? Are you going to faint? That's why this lesson is about what? Keeping your light lamps what? Filled, as you can see by the title. For every man shall bear his own burden. You got to bear it. What did the scripture say? What did Yahweh Shai say? If any man will follow me, let him take up his cross. You've got to take up your own cross. 
Nobody said this would be easy. <clears throat> okay? Your own crosses, your own trials, your own afflictions. Nobody can carry that for you. Did Yahawashai have help? He had help carrying the cross. But more so, he, the cross, he had help. But he still had to carry his cross. Okay? Because you've got men, at, as soon as a little bit of um, anguish, temptation, or something happens, you don't see them anymore. But these would be the same individuals getting on you. Through all my temptations, through all my trials, I've always had a good pattern of works. I've never went missing. <laughs> Even though men talk rubbish. Oh, why is he going through that? Well, because uh, the Lord see, deems uh, me as acceptable to go through these things. But guess what? I've never went missing when these things happen. Always had a good pattern of works. Why? Because I believe in Yahweh Shai at the end of it. It's all for the betterment. See, if you don't believe in that, if you're someone that just does this for clout chasing, for instant gratification, you're not going to hang about. You're going to jump in your vehicle, okay, drive around, drive, drive, drive around the city or wherever you may be, okay, just go back into the world. This is what you got men, this way you don't want to be in that spirit of instant gratification, vain glory. You got men, they, they, they come into this for the wrong reasons, okay. So every man shall bear his burden, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. And that's why you can't be stuck in your shell. For you to communicate, we're communicating by these electrical epistles, but true communication is when you're out, what? Out on the highways and byways, teaching. Because people are going to ask questions, people are going to come up. All types of people, different questions. And they want answers. So again, you're not yeah, you're communicating this is communicating right now, but there's even levels to communication. True communication when you're out there talking, reasoning. Certain men don't want to do that. See, but they just they just want the, the knowledge. They just want the knowledge. So they can come across as deep. I know well, I know this scripture, I know that's it's not all about that. It's good, but it's not all about that. Go to verse 7. Be not deceived. Don't deceive yourself. For the Mosai is not mocked. You cannot mock. You cannot put a false one on your shine. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. So whatever you're sowing out, that's what you're going to reap. If you ain't been sowing out nothing, you're just lukewarm, wicked. You're starting to turn wicked, evil. All you can do is um, you're a busybody. Just watching what another man's saying, but you're not doing the work yourself. Then if that's what you're... you're, you're <laughs> You're sowing, and that's what you're going to reap. But he that soweth to his flesh shall also reap of corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall reap. Salaka. And he that. Salaka. But he that soweth to the spirit. So if you're sowing to the spirit, you're doing things of the spirit. Shall reap life and everlasting life. That's what you're going to reap. Everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well doing. This is what happens to men, they get weary. Oh, they get tired. Oh, they don't want to do this anymore. It's like to give up. You can't give up. Look what Yahweh has done for us and look what he's still doing. You got brothers um in a WhatsApp sending particular signs that things they've seen. So Yahweh, he will show you signs. Even, even when you're not in the spirit, he will show you signs to get in the spirit. So but don't be weary in well doing. Don't be wary. Well, you don't want to do this more. To you, it's taking too long. Can't be in that spirit. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. You're gonna reap the the the, the, the what the, the fruits of your labors. Okay, as we have the therefore opportunity. An opportunity is. Leisure. So, when you have opportunity, what you're going to do well, let us do good unto all men. So you have to find that opportunity, that time. Time is precious. Especially unto them who are the household of the faith. So, this is what we're here to do. Yeah, well, first of all, we build ourselves up. And second of all, we build up with brothers. Once we build up ourselves, we build up. That's how it is. Okay? That's how it is. Now, let's go to... Romans, Baba Kasha. Shall 
should love doing this man there shouldn't be a day that goes past where you don't want to do this you've been blessed with this wisdom knowledge and understanding But men, they get fed up, they lose patience and what? They go right back into the world, never to be seen again. Romans 12. And so, some, of them just li some, of them, some of them just linger about. <laughs> some of them just linger about. Okay. Romans 12. And we're going to go straight to... 11. Not slothful. In business. This is a business. Remember when Yahweh was in the, was in the temple? And his father and his mother, Mary and Joseph, said, um, Where was you? We were worried, paraphrasing. And they were worrying for him. And what did you have to say? Did you not know I'm about my father's business? <laughs> so this is the business. He's, and whose business are we occupying? Your house is business. So we're not supposed to be slothful in that business. You're not, this ain't something where you're dealing with Esau. You're dealing with the heavenly father and his son. You don't want to be messing about. This is this this house. Men don't men really don't realize what they're involved in. You're dealing with Yahweh Shai and the Heavenly Father. Okay, his business. So you think he's not not keeping an eye? He's keeping an eye. First of all, he's sending his angels to see what you're doing. Where's your mind at? Not slothful in business. When you go into that slothful, I've been into that word many times. It's um, in the Hebrew, I believe it's Ramiah. Ramaya, Ramaya, which is um deceitful, deceitful. So if you're slothful, this what this look up the word slothful in the blue letter. It says deceitful, treacherous. So men that become slothful, eventually you start to see a pattern of um evilness. Um, men that are mischievous. This this what happens. This is what happens. They start to be mischievous, evil treacherous and that word that word treacherous what, what does it mean turn their back on you even sell out turn into a spy an agent for the spiritual deep this is what Yahabashai can do to you when you're slothful in business and that slothful that word slothful also means um shooting um shooting deceitfully de deceitful archers okay remiss also laxness letting down of hands and that spirit has overcame a lot of men i've been saying this for years now for years and it's actually happened i'm actually seeing it with my own eyes but all i can do is push out these les lessons in, in in the hope of that men will get out of that spirit and no i'm not perfect there's a lot of things i need to work on i'm not perfect but i'm doing this because i care if i didn't care i wouldn't say anything i'll say it's all, it's all right Okay. Fervent in the spirit. So hold on a minute. Does the script say lukewarm? The script says fervent. Okay. Fervent in the spirits. Bear me just a minute. Quickly type in that word fervent. Fervent in the spirit. That's what Yahweh Shai wants. He wants his men to be fervent in the spirit. And a lot of men say, well, I've heard this phrase a lot. I'm going to wait. I'm just going to wait until the spirit jumps on me. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. You do know there's times where I've even had times where I feel like the spirit is not really on fire. No, there's times where you have to force yourself. The scripture says force not the course of the river. I understand that. But it's times where you have to make that decision. You think that, oh, this, uh, all right, you just... Just don't, don't, don't do anything. Oh, suddenly, just the spirit comes. A lot of you don't know. A lot of you don't even know what the Holy Spirit is, because you're never making time for the spirit. Oh, I'm just gonna wait. No, you don't just wait. You you put in the action. Then Yahweh will start working with you because he sees what you're willing. I'm just gonna wait until the spirit jumps on me. What <laughs> the spirit of Satan jumps on you? You mean? Bear me just a minute. So let's go into that word. Um, fervent. Okay. Earnestly. Bear me just a minute. Type in this word. Strong's G sixteen nineteen. Ectenos. 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 Okay. Earnestly. Fervently. Intensely. So you have to have an earnest will to want to do this truth. 
Because <clears throat> if you really want the kingdom to come, you're going to be earnest about the truth. Fervently. Okay? And that's why, what's the, the whole premise of this lesson? Keeping your lamps filled. <clears throat> A lamp is what? Fervent. It burns fervently. Intensely. Okay? So you want to be immense. You could be immense and st intense and still balanced. Because you used to have men saying, oh, he's doing too much. Well, I'd rather be doing more than doing less. Because if, as long as you know you're doing more. At least you know you've done something than doing less. You ain't done nothing. But men that say that, it's just because they're not in the right spirit. That's all. Okay, intently. So your intent has to be right as well when it comes to doing this work. Just doing this for like views. Here it is. Uh, your channel gets cut down. Okay, and now you now your spirit changes. You're you're all in this for what? For for vain glory, contention. That shows that shows what manner of spirit you were in all that time. That means you were never really serious. <coughs> okay, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> that shows you were never really serious. Fervent in the spirit and serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope. So our hope is in what to have the kingdom, to be part of them first fruits. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, now I've got the hiccups. <laughs> so I get, man, that's, it's just Satan trying to attack the flesh. Patient in tribulation. So patient goes into suffering. And the longer you're in this truth, the, the more you realise this, this is about suffering. This is all about suffering. Okay? Silently. You don't need to tell everybody. You're, broad, you're broadcasting your hell. Oh, I'm going through the most hell. It's not just you. I'm sure other brothers across the world are going through something as well. Okay. Patient in tribulation. Okay. Long suffering. The scriptures tell you that in the Apocrypha. What's it? Um, the book of Syrah 2. And yes, you don't certain men they want to reprove you. You can call it you can call it the book of Syrah or Ecclesiasticus. Okay. Okay, that's that passive aggressive rubbish. I'll call it, do it how I do it. You can call it, if you want to call it the book of Syrac or the book of Ecclesiasticus, you can do either one. Okay? Because you've got a lot of men with a passive aggressive armed spirit, but they're not doing the work. Patient. In tribulation. You have to be a servant. You have to be humble. Humble yourself down. Patient in tribulation, continuing in instant, instant in prayer. And prayer is another major thing. Prayer is um is our connection. Because remember, this is your relationship between you and Yahweh Shai. It's your connection. So how do you connect with Yahweh Shai through prayer? Continuing instant in prayers. Prayer. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. Giving to hospitality. So are you hospitable? That means you're charitable. You're given. You know when someone comes round, you're looking after them. That's that hospitality. Okay? Like Lot did with them angels. Okay? Which were in a form of what? Men. He was very hosp um, hospitable. Verse 14. Bless them which persecute you and will be in persecuted. And this ain't just talking about the people of the world. This being about the men in the truth. You bless them. Bless and curse not. There's been times, certain things I've seen, certain things I'm still seeing, I'm saying, should I put up a curse? Should I put up a curse? I'm like, no, 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 that's not right. You know, let the Lord deal with it, bless him, and if the Lord, <laughs> that bless could get turned into a curse, so you never know. Okay, but bless them which persecute you, and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. That means you're, 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 you're looking out, you're looking out for brothers. Okay. Paul said that um condescend of men to low will stay. Oh, it's here, it's here. <laughs> Maybe just a minute. Be of the same mind one toward another. So, example, you may um you may know more than another brother, but are you too proud to lower yourself down to him? Paul done that. Paul, that was a brilliant spirit he had. He could get on a barbarian's level where they could understand him. He could get on someone's level that was didn't have as much understanding as him. And be relatable. That's a that's another thing about this truth. Are you relatable? You do know when um the Pharisees, the the, the chief priests and Pharisees in Matthew twenty three, they were not relatable. 
And that's what the people take to as well. Someone that's relatable. You understand what I'm saying? And that's, that's the thing about humility. When you're humble, you're very relatable. When you're proud, you're not relatable because you're looking down upon others. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things. Okay, the scriptures tell you that in the Apocrypha as well. Um, what is it? Search not things that are too hard for thee. Okay, and all that. Because more is given to thee than men understand. Okay. So where was we? Mind not high things, but condescend. Condescend means to come down to men of lower state. So you deal with them on a particular level where they understand. Because remember Paul said, I could not speak to you as... um. Spiritual because ye are yet carnal. So you gotta know different men in this tree. This is what I'm learning as well. Me being a teacher, a prophet, Lord winning a prophet. You have to know how to deal with people according to their spirit. Okay. Be not wise in your own conceits. What's that pride? And being wise in your own conceits is Really, you're not going by the scriptures. you going by your own mind, by your own opinion, what you think is right. That's being wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Okay? So there's no need for that. Because your Habashai sees everything. Okay? Because you've got men that want to do that as so well. Let me get my lick back. You know? You know? Yeah. I got this on you. I got some dirt on you. Okay, but Yahweh has got dirt on you. He's got your track record. Okay. Yahweh has got your track record. Okay, you don't want to be. That's a dangerous spirit to be in. That's a very, very, very dangerous spirit. To, but this is what happens when you're not. When your fire ain't burning. When the spirit is no longer dealing with you. Now you got what them left hand spirits dealing with you. A mischievous spirit dealing with you. Okay? You trying to look at another man's rap sheet when your is looking at your rap sheet. That's why you don't want to be in that spirit. Just do do the work. And if there's something you notice within the brother, you pull him up on it, then you go about your business and that's it. The spirit of Esau, that's why this what is Esau known as the accuser of our brethren. You don't want to be of that spirit. <laughs> okay? And this is verse 18. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceable with all men. Okay? Because if you're doing this, you're going to have less grief. You're going out there starting fights, walking about. You've got men, they can't even get over that obstacle. That's the first thing you learn in the truth. If you're walking about, if you're walking about with your shoulders all out, talking shit to Edomites, you might get, something might happen to you. You may even get in a fight. Are you going to put yourself in a situation you shouldn't be in? Why? Because you, you were not using discretion. Men want to know all these deep scriptures, but you can't, even, you can't even do that. One of the most first things you learn in this truth, discretion. And it says if it be possible. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes you may have to remove yourself from particular scenarios. If it gets too heated. As, as much as life in you live peaceably with all men. Okay? And that's why when I'm walking past people in my everyday in my everyday, they ain't really got nothing to say about me. Alright, you're right there. Nod your head. Alright, and you move, and that's it. But if you're walking about with a hard face, well you're gonna attract that attention. Okay? You giving people the mean eye. Well, you're not being wise, are you? Remember what the scripture says, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, where I send you forth as sheep amongst wolves. People are looking people out here are looking to devour you. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. You got men that wanna wanna avenge. Put up curses. Put up curses. Nothing's wrong with that. But what's it easier? What 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 remember what the scriptures say? Mercy rejoices over judgment. Remember that. Mercy rejoices over judgment. You've got men that they, they have no balance to their spirit. Put up curses. 
He looked at me this way, put up courses. That means you haven't grown. You have not grown. Yeah, there's a time you can put up curses. Nothing's wrong with that. But are you balanced? And you want to be careful when you're doing that as well. Because that's the, especially if you don't believe in the Bible and you're a scoffer, them curses are going to come to no avail and that curse might come right back up on you. You understand what I'm saying? But if you're not examining yourself, you're, you're, you're going to be acting in that manner. Some, some 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 little thing happens to you. Put up curses. You need to grow up. Grow up, man. Grow up. You, you didn't come into this curse and say put up curses. But no, you think Yahweh wasn't even Yahweh wasn't doing that. Paul he was putting curses upon certain men, but he had a re there was a reason for it. There was a reason, a valid reason for doing that, because they left him. What's it, Alexander and Hymenaeus? Yeah, he sent Satan upon them. Because they done him much evil. Okay. We're gonna shut off. Bear me just a minute. Give place unto wrath, so you give place. That's patience. For it is written, vengeance is mine. And guess what? There's men that have done certain things to me and they're still doing certain things. But I'm looking at it as like, alright, let Yahweh Shai deal with it in due time. And that's it. I will repay, say after the Lord Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai will repay. <laughs> okay. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. That's why I don't... we got a lot of enemies out here. Mostly of our own nation. But what do we do? We feed them with the word. And if he first, give him drink. So we're giving him drink, which is this word. Okay, which is water. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his own head. Why? Because this individual's evil. But you're what you're what you're 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 giving him good. This word. Be not overcome of evil. And this is what happens to a lot of men. They're overcome with evil. Overcome with it. That's why they render evil. But overcome evil with good. By what your good works, <laughs> as it says in Matthew's what five. Okay, and fourteen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Okay. So with this lesson, I really hope this was edifying. And until the next time, shalom to the hopeful elect across the globe. Shalom.